This is Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. Thank you for joining us on this Monday, May 13, 2013. Here are the top news stories that you need to know about right now. First today, according to Christianity Today, Indian Christians are celebrating the results of recent elections in Karnataka, a southwestern state known for having the highest rates of violence against Christians. A Hindu nationalist party which supports extremist groups has finally lost power after nine years of unchallenged rule. Asia News reports that the BJP party is decimated. Its defeat is good news, especially for social and religious minorities of Karnataka. Victims in these years of violence and persecution of the Hindu ultranationalist groups, openly supported by the BJP. There were more anti-Christian attacks in Karnataka in 2012 than in any other Indian state. It surpassed notorious Orissa in 2010. And in the days leading up to the May 5th election, Christian leaders had warned that allowing the BJP to remain in power would only lead to increased violence. But now, say John K. George, president of the Global Council of Indian Christians, says Karnataka is sending a great message to all parties in view of the general elections of 2014. We must stop the political use of religion, protect minorities, and work for the common good. Second today, according to Religion News Service, the number of people attending Sunday services at Great Britain's Anglican churches is continuing to drop, but church officials say there are signs that the decline is starting to stabilize. A spokesperson for the Church of England said that average weekly attendance at the nation's 16,247 Anglican parishes was 1.1 million in 2011 representing a drop of just 0.3% from the previous year's figures. The annual statistics reveal a substantial increase in attendance at the country's storied cathedrals. Christmas church-going rose by 14%. Christenings were up 4.3%, and adult baptisms were up 5%. The number of weddings, however, was down by 3.6% to 51,880. The 1.1 million Britons in church pales in comparison to the estimated 22 million, about 4 in 10 Britons who are considered official members of the Church of England. Overall, Sunday attendance is down from 1.14 million in 2000, falling about 1% a year until 2011. Third today, according to the New York Daily News, Queen's power broker Reverend Floyd Flake endorsed Bill Thompson for mayor on Sunday four years after turning his back on him in favor of Mayor Bloomberg. Flake heads the Greater Allen Cathedral of New York and Jamaica, the largest church in the city with more than 23,000 members, making him an influential voice in the borough's African-American community. Flake told the Daily News, I respect Mayor Bloomberg tremendously, but his term is up, and elections and life are always about looking forward, not backward. I believe Bill has the right vision for the future city. The endorsement could help Thompson as he works to solidify his African-American base and build a black Latino coalition. Fourth today, according to Salon.com, Arkansas's Riverside Public School District has called off a sixth grade graduation ceremony after a parent asked administrators to remove a Christian prayer from the opening address to the students. The school was contacted by a local parent supported by the American Civil Liberties Union over the inclusion of prayer in the public school ceremony, but rather than remove religion from the festivities, they canceled them entirely. Sixth grade parent Kelly Adams told ABC News affiliate KAIT8 that the request to take prayer out of the opening address upset parents and students, explaining that the school's decision to cancel was justified because we just want to take a stand for God because we felt like our rights were taken away. Conceding that not everyone is a Christian at the school, Adams added, I realize they have rights too, but you can't take rights away from one group and give it to another. Kelly, along with other parents, have arranged to hold an alternative ceremony at a nearby church, where they will be free to pray. She said, we are including everyone. Everyone is invited. We want everyone to come and be a part of it. 
fifth today, according to Jerusalem Post, after meeting with senior Jewish leaders in Great Britain, the Church of Scotland has agreed to change the wording of a controversial paper which denies Jews any special claim to the land of Israel. The paper entitled The Inheritance of Abraham rejects claims that scripture offers any people a privileged claim for possession of a particular territory. The paper further states that reconciliation can only be possible if the Israeli military occupation of the West Bank and of East Jerusalem and the blockade of Gaza are ended. According to The Guardian, the church has agreed to change the report's introduction to reflect that it has never doubted Israel's right to exist. The original report has been removed from the Church of Scotland's website until the change has been implemented. Scottish Jews said that they were outraged by the controversial report. Six today, according to the Associated Press, Egyptian security officials say a Coptic Christian who stabbed his wife for converting to Islam has killed himself by jumping out of a fourth-story courthouse window. The officials say Romani Amir committed suicide on Sunday as he was waiting to be interrogated by police at the main court in the southern city of Aswat. The officials spoke on condition of anonymity because they were authorized to speak to the media. Amir's wife remained in the hospital in critical condition following the stabbing on Saturday. Amir was buried later Sunday in his village near Aswat. The area is a stronghold of Islamists, and mourners chanted slogans against them during the funeral. Seven today, according to Religion News Service, even as an annual review last week gave Catholic bishops high marks on sex abuse prevention policies, officials with the church's oversight agencies expressed serious concerns about recent high-profile failings in several dioceses. The latest scandal has shaken Newark, New Jersey, where Archbishop John Myers failed to stop a priest from ministering with children in several parishes, even though he had assured prosecutors that he would enforce a lifetime ban on the priest's access to children following a molestation case. Myers initially defended his oversight of the Reverend Michael Fugue, but under increasing pressure he reversed himself. Fugue then resigned from ministry, but ongoing calls for Myers to step down have generated new headlines. Eighth today, according to Charisma News, running into a pastor who tells his congregation to get into the Bible is not something that happens daily in postmodern Finland. Add to that a congregation that takes time to memorize scripture, and you have a rare combination. Yet, against all odds, the United Community Church in the capital area of Helsinki is exactly that. According to UCC pastor Sean Rossi, the church has held a pattern of preaching expositionally through the Bible throughout its history. Planted in 2007, UCC is an international English-speaking church, ministering to both Finns and foreigners living in Finland. Rossi wants people to know Christ and to learn to trust and depend on Him. In addition to Sunday preaching, the Bible is being taught in what UCC calls growth classes. These Monday night classes are divided into three six-week segments that cover topics from Christian doctrine to world missions. Through these classes, people have learned to go to the Bible themselves to find solutions to the issues of life. Ninth today, according to Politico, new reports show that the IRS repeatedly changed the criteria it used for singling out nonprofit applications for further review, at one point looking at all groups hoping to make America a better place to live. The Wall Street Journal and Reuters both reported that the IRS moved beyond giving a skeptical eye to Tea Party and Patriot groups. It was also targeting groups focused on specific issues, including government spending, government debt, education of the public via advocacy, lobbying to make America a better place to live, and all groups that criticize how the country is being run. Both the newspaper and the news service are basing their report on an Inspector General report expected to be released in full later this week. Tenth today, according to Business Insider, Republican Senators John McCain and Susan Collins both brushed off any suggestion that President Barack Obama should be impeached over new revelations about the September terrorist attack on the U.S. diplomatic mission in Benghazi, Libya. On ABC's This Week, McCain suggested that such talk wasn't serious. He said, with all due respect, I think this is a serious issue. 
I will even give the president the benefit of the doubt on some of these things. McCain, however, did refer to the Obama administration's editing of talking points in the immediate aftermath of the attack as a cover-up. He suggested that there should be a special congressional committee to investigate the attack and its aftermath. Finally today, according to the AFP, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is to hold talks on Tuesday with Russian President Vladimir Putin on his conflict in Syria amid concerns that Moscow plans to deliver advanced missiles to the Damascus regime. The Kremlin said it is expected that major attention will be paid to the current situation in the Middle East, first and foremost in Syria. Last week, Russia's state news agency, citing a diplomatic source, also said that Netanyahu expected to call on Putin at his Black Sea. According to Ynet's defense analyst Ron Benishi, Netanyahu is planning to urge Putin to back out of the arms deal with the Syrian regime. The goal of the pressing visit is to allow the two leaders to coordinate their positions regarding Syria and Hezbollah, and more importantly, to prevent the implementation of the Russian-Syrian arms deal, which the Russians have postponed but failed to cancel. That's today's top news stories. You can read all about these stories and more at urbanchristiannewsnetwork.com. As you go throughout this day, keep this word in mind. Hebrews 1.3 says, Jesus being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. God loves you, he always has, and he always will. He loves you so much that the Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, why don't you get to know him today? Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose by the power of God for you. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today, and he will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. May God bless your day.